Property investing can be risky, and I do my best to reassure you that with a little bit of the right knowledge, most of that risk can be eliminated. Not all, but most. So how do you get yourself to the point where you're comfortable with the risk involved to say, you know what, let's do it. Well, stay tuned and I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Andy Walker from Monopoly.com, where I blog online about my journey as a property investor and landlord, sharing what works for me and what doesn't to help you start or expand your property portfolio. Now, this video is based on a guest post that I received on my blog from Lana Hall, who's a psychologist and coach, and I'll put a link to that post and to her website down in the description below. She has listed three questions that you can ask yourself to help you increase your confidence and overcome any fear that you may have with risk. Here we go. The first question is, why do you want to invest? Having a reason why is so important. A really strong reason will help you get started and delay putting it off any further if you've been considering it for a while. It won't just be about the additional income, it'll be about what the additional income can give you. If you know beforehand what you will spend your income on, then deciding to invest becomes much easier. The three most common reasons I hear from people for starting out in property investing are security, to help fund their retirement or in case they lose their job. Knowing that they have additional income can increase their sense of safety and security in the world. And the next one is independence, because another income stream could allow you maybe to work part time or maybe even move to another job that provides a lower sum salary, but it would be more enjoyable for you because it's wrapped around one of your hobbies. Also, I know that not being solely reliant on an employer is a good place to be. And the last one is family. Additional income can help you support family in times of hardship, and it can allow you to spend more time with your family if you're working less hours. If you have children, property can help fund their education and it will also be an asset which they will inherit one day. Each of these have compelling reasons for wanting to invest as opposed to just wanting more money or wanting to invest for the sake of investing because you think it's the right thing to do and that you'll do someday. The problem is that someday never arrives. These are emotional reasons to commit and having a why will help you eliminate some of the fears that you may have. The second question to ask yourself is where's your stop point? Many people fear risk because they don't know what will happen and people don't like uncertainty. So you can reduce this fear by deciding what you would do if your investment started to go bad or if it didn't perform as well as you expected. So before you start, decide how much you could lose and still be okay. For example, you may decide to use 25,000 of equity in your home to invest in a property worth 100,000, which means you would have a mortgage of 75,000 attached to that investment property. You might decide to keep that property irrespective of the net income that it produces, but you keep a close eye on the market value and you'll decide to sell if the market takes a downturn. So if the value dropped to 90,000, you would then sell and after selling fees, maybe walk away with 85,000, which will allow you to pay back the 75,000 mortgage and have no more debt, which means then you would have lost 15,000 as opposed to 25,000. Or you may set yourself a target of achieving 200 a month in net income or 2,400 a year, and you then decide to sell if that investment property doesn't achieve that after the first year. Whatever you decide, the point is you have reduced your fear of the unknown because you have planned for it with your stop point. You may lose and you may lose heavily, but it wouldn't destroy you because you've decided what you could cope with as a worst case scenario before you started. Also, knowing your stop point makes investing a safer option if you're trying to convince your spouse or partner to share the risk. Knowing that they'll essentially be okay by taking on the risk, even though they might lose some money, will drastically reduce their fear around investing. And question three, do you have a magic wand? 
What Lana is getting at here is that it's important to know that there are some things that you may worry about that you can control and other things that you can't control. And to minimize your fear, you need to distinguish between the two. The way to approach this is to list every fear that you have around property investing and then split that list into two lists. One which has a list of fears that you can do something about and one that has a list of fears that you can't do anything about. So your first list might include something like, you don't know enough about property investing to get started right now. This can be fixed by taking the time to learn, but make sure you quantify what enough is, otherwise you'll be learning forever. Your second list might include things like, the market may drop and I'll lose money. Yes, we know this is a possibility and there isn't anything you can do about it, and worrying about it won't stop the market from dropping. But you have a plan for that, and you can refer to your stop point for reassurance. So by accepting that some things are outside of your control, and by planning for them as best as you can beforehand, it will give you confidence to move forward. Waiting until everything is perfect, for all the lights to be on green, and for the outcome to be assured, will mean you will never make a start. So there you have the three questions that you can ask yourself to help you overcome any fears and give you more confidence to start property investing. Before finish, I have one more question. What is one of your fears around starting out in property investing? Please leave a comment below and I will help out in any way I can. Or if you're already investing, how do you deal with your fears? Your comment may help someone else take their first step. If you found this video useful, please like and share, and you can link with others who you know who have maybe considered investing for a while but haven't started yet. If it's your first time to the channel, definitely subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos which are all geared towards helping you start or improve your property business. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. A really strong reason. <laughs> Knowing they have a, a mind focus. <laughs>